How's it going everybody? Stoutman coming back at you today and we are going to talk about some Blu-rays that I picked up. Uh, some fairly unusual ones at that because usually I don't get brand new Blu-rays that cost $20 each and that's how much each of these cost. But uh, I felt like these are titles that I really wanted to have in my collection. One I really wanted to watch and I knew I was going to love it. And the other one I had already seen and, you know, had to have it in my collection. So let's just start off with the one I really wanted to watch but haven't seen it yet. I'm planning to see this with some friends very soon. So um, actually by the time that I put this video up, you probably you, know, you won't be able to spoil it for me. So don't even bother. That is the Hateful Eight here. Quentin Tarantino's Hateful Eight. Uh, this is a western set in snowy town, essentially. The interesting thing about that, of course, as I mentioned before, I think I actually mentioned this movie before when I uh, did a overview, not an overview, but a DVD update talking about McCabe and Mrs. Miller. I got that on DVD uh, recently, right? And I talked about how McCabe and Mrs. Miller is a western set in the northwest. The ending has a scene that takes place in the middle of like a wintry scene. It's snowing and yeah, it's it's like a shootout in the snow kind of thing going on, right? Which you don't really see very frequently in westerns. In most westerns, all the shootout and all the action takes place in the wild west, in the deserts, in the southwest uh, of the United States, right? Or that's typically where they tell you that the action is happening even though a lot of the action in the Wild West as we know it took place in, you know, places like Kansas and Wyoming and, yeah, not really what you would think of as the Wild West today. I really liked uh, McCabe and Mrs. Miller because it's a little bit offbeat, because it's a little bit different. They completely did a different approach to the Western. It was a revisionist Western. It was also kind of like a sort of a deconstruction of the Western in certain aspects. So uh, I'm totally down with that. I love when they do that with Westerns and Quentin Tarantino very obviously here is kind of doing something like that. He's paying homage to the Western obviously, but uh, he's also doing his own little take on it here. I haven't seen it yet obviously, but uh, just from what I have seen from the trailers and from what you know, I know about the movie, um, I can tell that he has put a lot of love into this, that he knows what he's doing, uh, he knows westerns, and he is doing his own interesting little take on them here that I cannot wait to actually check out. Uh, gonna be watching it here in the next few days, but what I thought was really cool was when I went to pick it up here at Best Buy, this particular version has a gatefold, or not a gatefold, but you know, has one of these things that flips open here and it's got this nice little panorama from the movie or well it's not from the movie but it's a uh, you know an animated not an animated either it's a it's a drawing it's a painting of a scene from the movie essentially yeah there you go can't believe it took me that long to get that out but you know it's two almost two thirty in the morning and I'm tired whatever <laughs> But uh, yeah, I'm very happy to have this on Blu-ray. I can't wait to finally check it out. And I have to say, so happy that Ennio Morricone finally won an Academy Award for his work on this movie. Ennio Morricone is an amazing uh, composer for film. He, ha he always has been, he always will be. He has deserved so many awards that he has never won. And I'm so happy that he finally got the recognition he deserved at least with this movie. You know, it was like, you owe it to him, you motherfuckers. He's been so goddamn influential. You fucking owe it to him. So yeah, very happy to see that uh, he got recognition for this one and cannot wait to hear his composition for this film and I cannot wait to watch the movie itself. So yeah, not many special features here to speak of. Just Beyond the Eight, a behind the scenes look at Sam, uh, behind the scenes look Sam, and Sam Jackson's Guide to Glorious 70 Millimeter. Uh, that's it. But, you know, 
basically pay twenty dollars to get the movie brand new because I wanted to fucking watch it. <laughs> also, it came with this nifty slipcover that no doubt will not be around forever. Uh, the only thing that sucks about the slipcover, I don't know if you can tell, it's right here. It's a little sticky nub instead of the clip nub that they usually have for these kinds of slipcovers, so that's what happens right there. That's here, I'll really put some pressure on this, alright? I'll really put some pressure on it. Really? Uh-huh. Didn't take long. <sighs> and finally, last but not least, I am a poor guy, so I can't keep buying these really expensive brand new Blu-rays all the time, so I have to be picky choosy when I do buy brand new Blu-rays, right? So, yes, I only got two. I only got two, deal with it. <laughs> But finally, last but not least, I picked up, and you may have guessed it from what you see right there, Star Wars The Force Awakens on Blu-ray! Oh! Yeah, um, love this movie. It was a fantastic movie. I don't care what anybody says about it. It was a great fucking Star Wars movie. Everybody keeps saying, oh, it's a... It's just a remake of the original Star Wars movie. Like, no, they're just calling back to the scenes from the original Star Wars movie. It is its own fucking movie. It's not the same fucking movie. Just stop. Just shut up. Uh, most people I know love this movie, and I loved it as well. Very happy to finally have it on Blu-ray, even though it's interesting that with the new advent of... Or not advent. It's been a while since 4K came out, right? But finally now releasing 4k discs and all that they're finally now releasing 4k discs it's interesting that they don't have this on 4k right but from what i've heard it looks very good on blu-ray i haven't had a chance to pop it in and check it out myself but i probably will be doing that this weekend so yeah beautiful i opted to go there are a bunch of different versions of this right i have to go for this one because it's just I felt like it looked nicer, the slip cover looks nicer than, uh, I didn't even really like the steelbook from Best Buy, because it's, it's not a bad steelbook, but it's also kind of meh, to me at least. I guess it fits with all the, uh, the other steelbooks that they've been doing for the Star Wars movies, but meh. I don't have the other steelbooks for the other Star Wars movies, so I don't really care. I'm still waiting on them to release, like, original... Star Wars movies that weren't the special feature, or not the special features, but the special editions. The de-specialized editions of Star Wars, I want to see those on Blu-ray or on 4K, and then I will buy them. But until then, I'm going to stick with this on Blu-ray. Very good movie, can't wait to check it out. And yeah, it's got a bunch of special features, because uh, it's Disney, so Disney knows how to do that shit well. Uh, Secrets of the Force Awakens, A Cinematic Journey. That one is apparently a, roughly a feature-length documentary. I think it's like 60-something minutes. Uh, the Story Awakens, The Tale Read, Building BB-8, Crafting Creatures, Blueprint of a Battle, The Snow Fight, John Williams, The Seventh Symphony, ILM, The Visual Magic of the Force, plus deleted scenes. So, yeah, fairly hefty selection of special features, not a lot, but, you know, a significant amount considering how cheap companies are getting with their special features nowadays, so yeah, I was very happy with that. I was even happier to see that it has a black Blu-ray case. Ooh, ooh. And a lot, one thing that people haven't really been noting here is that uh, if you look at how the movie uh, poster art here is cropped, They've actually got black on the sides here. They've got, like, black bar here and black bar here, right? That's because they went with, like, the full artwork here for the movie. And that... I, I actually like that decision. I think it's, like, a little odd. It's not something I'm familiar with them doing, and especially for Blu-ray. But if you're going to do a Blu-ray of, Star, of, Star, of a Star Wars movie and you've got artwork from the man, the myth, the legend here, uh, yeah, you better damn pay respect to him. You better pay respect and do the full fucking artwork here. 
And that appears to be exactly what they've done. Drew Struzan's artwork here, very fucking nice. Very happy to see that. Uh, they didn't cut anything off. They didn't chance anything and chance the possibility of cutting anything off. So they just put black bars on either side so that the full majesty of his artwork would show up there. Love it. And of course, also love that it's in a nice black Blu-ray case. You don't always see that. Uh, it comes with the movie on Blu-ray and then, of course, the bonus disc and the DVD. So, yeah. Very cool. Very cool indeed. And if you did catch a glimpse of that digital copy code, go ahead and try to use it. I've already redeemed it. I don't really redeem digital copy codes that much, but when it's a deep Disney Blu-ray, I redeem it on Disney Movie Rewards so that I can get you know, potentially even more Blu-rays for free. So, yeah. Already redeemed. Sorry. <laughs> Anyways, that'll do it for me today. That's all I picked up in terms of the really expensive Blu-rays that I picked up over the last week or two. And it's probably all I'm going to pick up for another, well, week or two. So, yeah. Uh, thanks for watching. Catch you guys later. Peace.